Hey, it's Brett Graham with Graham's Lawn Care, back here again with another Lawn Care Setup 2021. This one is part three, our landscaping setup. Walk with me here and I'll kind of show you some of the tools we use. That's our brake action uh, weed eater there that takes a post saw and a uh, tiller attachment. Um, we've got our regular weed eater here. We've got our measuring stick, our wheel, our blowers, our Honda HXA push mower, our wheelbarrow, and then various hand tools and attachments. Well, the main services we do that I consider to be under the auspices of landscaping would be things like paper installation, bed maintenance, uh, mulch installation, laying mulch, planting flowers, trimming trees, uh, doing things like that that are, aren't just traditional mowing, aren't super scalable, you need uh, consistent quotes or custom quotes for each, each customer. Um, you can't do flat pricing or anything like that. So that's what I would consider landscaping, um, just small scale custom stuff. We don't do anything huge. Um, we're not you know building concrete sidewalks or driveways or anything like that, but just small scale stuff, uh, you know, keep, keep it to the gardens and things like that. So I'll, I'll walk you through a couple of our services here and show you how we use our different tools and equipment in concert to, to make those services happen and, and do it efficiently. So come with us. We'll, we'll start here first with pavers. So um, when we install our, our pavers, uh, what we want to do is make sure that first off, we can clear any plant material that's in the way, grass, anything like that. So that's where our tiller attachment come, comes in. So our tiller attachment goes right on the end of our steel weed eater. And what this can do is basically tear up the dirt and remove any of the grass roots that are in it. If it's really thick grass or weeds that you want to get rid of, it may make it easier to first weed eat the ground or takes us over here to our Honda HXA. Um, whenever we were clearing out that wedding video, I'll show that picture up on the screen now. Um, we had to clear out a lot of grass. What I first did was I just scalped. So I just turned the bag on, mowed it on the lowest setting, got the grass down super low, and then I was able to use my weed eater to get the grass down the dirt. So that basically the only thing left was a little bit of dirt and roots. That's when you employ the tiller get everything ready to go, pull the rest of the roots, and then you're ready to lay sod, you're ready to lay mulch, you're ready to do whatever it is that you need to do for that landscaping ground, including laying pavers once you've removed all the plant material, treated it for weeds, packed it down, and made it level. Um, some of the other stuff that we use to uh, install our, our pavers here is of course the wheelbarrow. So what we'll do is we'll go to a supply store. Uh, in Oklahoma, it's called Minic Materials. So there's gonna be one similar in your area that just sells rocks mulch, dirt, things like that. So we'll go pick up about a half ton or a ton of paver sand. Paver sand is like uh, fine gravel. And what that does is essentially it lays down a two inch bed of um, gravel over the top of the dirt to level it out completely and pack it down. So you use this tool here to spread it all out evenly and get it mostly level. Once you've laid, uh, Lead your paper sand in, and then you use this tool here to tamp it down and make sure that it's compact. After that, you simply lay your pavers down uh, in an orderly fashion, make sure that they're even, tamp them down, and then you use this tool again because you pour more paver sand over the top of the pavers and then you sweep it and pull it in between the cracks. You can also employ a blower, a handheld blower, and just leave it on idle mode so it'll slowly idle away all of the excess gravel on top of the pavers and then you water for effect. You continue to water the pavers and let all of that paver sand coagulate and sink down and turn into basically concrete and then boom you do another layer throw on some more paver sand sweep it sweep it and you just do that until everything is flush there's no cracks it doesn't move and you've essentially made a concrete path that's how we do our pavers that's how i recommend you do them too um, you can also use any edging the dirt works fine but if you install plastic or metal edging um, you can go down a couple inches and do that it's just sometimes it can be a little tricky um, to make the corners right if it's not exactly four feet or eight feet just depending on what edge and usually um, the only stuff that's cheap or available that customers are going to want would be like for example the brown or the green metal edging from Home Depot those come in four and eight foot sections so I've got a little bit of extra mulch here just in case anybody wants us to, to hit you know their small residential properties if, if any of my customers ask I've always got a little bit on site available for some of the larger jobs like the commercial properties for example the hotels or some of our acreages that we have um, they're going to want extra that's not from Home Depot or Lowe's um, and it's usually going to be some sort of cypress mulch um, that is like a lot more fine and it's really expensive like at market which is like $12 a bag, $13 a bag. Um, in other commercial places they may be 5 or 6 
uh, but you kind of just got to look around for deals. So like, for example, last season, I had a, had a deal with Mulch at Site One, Site One Maintenance, that store I always talk about, where they had like 180 or 240, whatever it was, bags of mulch that had been damaged. And they were selling what was usually retail for $13 a bag for $2 a bag. So my service was I would buy the mulch for $2 a bag and just lay a tarp out on the trailer and we would just throw it all on there. And then the excess mulch would come out of the bags would be on the tarp and we just put that into a wheelbarrow and shuffle it out like normal. Um, so I'm selling mulch for $2 a bag that I buy for $2 a bag, $6 a bag for installation. And if the customer did it themselves, it would be $12 or $13 a bag. So not only is it cheaper to have me do it and buy it, but it's half the price. So there's deals like that out there. I've been looking this season, but haven't found any so far. Uh, but other than that, the only other really good deal for mulch I found is this mulch right here, premium brown, premium black, and premium red at, home, at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, if there's a cool gentleman out there, like I'm really good friends with the line up there. I've met him. I've been going there for years with the business I had before the Navy and this business now. Um, so he can give me a deal for $2 a bag for mulch when they retail at four. So it's not quite the difference of two to 13, but still two to four. I can save the customer half the price. And then, you know, they can buy the mulch for $4 a bag and install it themselves. Or they can have me do it for $6 a bag. It's a little more expensive, but I think it's still worth it for the convenience of having it delivered, having it installed, and then having all the weeds under the mulch professionally removed because that's part of the price per bag. So that's how we do our mulch. Um, mulch is really scalable, it's great. If you get into a big neighborhood or a, or a homeowners association that has like four or five people that know each other well, and they all wanna get mulch, you can have scenarios where you may lay four, 500 bags in a week. I'll show you some pictures up on the screen now where this is one day where we've got two separate pictures of our trailer, this is before the car crash, loaded up with 90 bags of mulch. And I'm talking in one day, we do 90 bags in the morning and then we just go to site one, grab some lunch, throw up another 90 bags and then go out and land and it's four or five p.m. we're done. And that's 180 times six that we just did at $2 a bag. And we could probably even charge more per bag, but it's just easier to sell. You get a lot more people hopping on it. You can have like, you know, five, six, seven people. Just yeah, throw me 30 bags of mulch, 40 bags of mulch. And, you know, a little bit here and there, it's not a lot for them, but it adds up quickly. If you do 400 bags of mulch in a week, you're making a couple grand and that's, I mean, that's easy money. That's all day. So spring work is really lucrative. It can be a lot of fun and that's how mulch works. But just buying straight retail can be kind of hard sometimes to compete with these larger companies because they might buy two or three pallets at once and have a deal where they get it for less than, you know, what you can get if you're buying 10 bags at once or 20 bags at once. So Lowe's, Home Depot may be the best option for you if they'll work with you. They may not in your area. Um, and I don't even know if it's official for them to work with me. It could just be a special deal I've got. Um, but then there's other other options too, like the Site One or other places that have reclaimed mulch that you can get. So that's how our mulch works. So I'll cover the topic of tarps a little bit. This right here is our biggest tarp. Um, it's really thick, made out of plastic. I don't recommend something like this. Um, that's like 12 by 16. For any sort of landscaping, it's way too big, way too heavy to deal with, and it's just gonna get caught in the wind like a sail and blow away. I use this tarp to lay over the bed of my truck, um, and then I put a heater in there during the winter time so my spray rig doesn't freeze and crack because my garage isn't big enough to fit my truck. So that's why I use this one. That's why you would employ one that's this big. In my opinion, I don't see any real use for it out in the field when it's that large. This one is great right here. It's a, a different, I don't even know if I would call this a tarp. Um, it's really tight fabric, it's really strong material, it's almost like weed eater string type material um, and it's super light and because it's hollow it doesn't get caught in the wind that easy. Um, so this is what I recommend, they're like 30, 40 bucks at site one. Definitely worth it to have one or, these, one or two of these just for leaves or sticks or whatever, small stuff. Um, that it actually can be really tedious to pick up if you don't have the tarp and just break stuff on and throw it off. That other one is just a cheap one I got from Home Depot or, or Love, whichever place I was at. And it rips pretty easy. And it's kind of at the end of its, of its days here. We smell leaves and stuff and we're trying to move with them, but it's still working. So uh, we'll, we'll keep using it until it rips and then I'll get another black one. And that's what I use my tarps for. Finally, uh, I'll talk to you about tree trimming. So this is the way we trim trees if they're too tall. Or for example, if you have, like in this picture here that I'll show, um, if you have trees that are hanging over a brick structure, like a, a wall or a house, you don't want to cause any damage and you have to control where the tree limb falls, uh, but you don't want to put yourself in any danger. So this is how I do it. I'm not necessarily saying this is how I recommend it. It's probably sketchy, it's kind of dangerous, um, but this is how we've handled our tree trimming stuff in the past and it's worked out pretty well. Um, so I just take a rope like this 
I either hold it in my hand or throw it in my mouth. And if this were a tree, just imagine I go, you know, 30 or 40 feet up and set eight feet. I climb the tree. And then once I get to my desired location, you know, way up there, I'll take the rope and I'll put it around a branch. And then I'll slowly climb back, back down the tree and pull the rope with me. As we cut the base, I can control the fall. So uh, let's say I don't want it to hit my trailer gate, or I don't want it to fall back onto the patio. I we get our control to sit, and that's how uh, that's how we take tree limbs down that are going to fall on stuff. I just climb up, throw the rope around. Use either our chainsaw or our chainsaw pole attachment here. Steel is great. Totally recommend them for their chainsaws. You don't need to get the craziest one. Seriously, the cheapest chainsaw will work like way better than you think it will. It's basically the same as the ones you can rent from Home Depot. They're, they're solid commercial units. They say they're not commercial, but they work really well for us. So I haven't found anything that we've been able to throw against them that breaks them. And e even just this steel pole saw is almost good enough to not even need a chainsaw. It's only 10 inches long and super powerful, works super great. Um, and it's it's kind of heavy and bulky, but it's easy enough to use where if you're up in a tree, you can kind of finagle it around branches and stuff and use it properly. Um, as for the hand tools, this is a, a measuring wheel. This is perfect for finding the square footage of paver jobs or uh, mulch jobs if you have to quote. Um, you know, how square footage works, length times width equals area. So you just uh, roll, so let's say it's five feet by six feet. We know that it's gonna be 30 feet uh, of area and 30 square feet that we have to cover. So if our mulch covers three square feet per bag, we may need 10 bags. That's not a real example, that's just how you can measure it. Uh, or pavers, it'll say what we charge uh, $15 per square foot to install pavers. Uh, when a customer asks for a quote, we can give her a quote that way based on giving the giving us the square footage of the job site. There's also digital versions of this tool you can use. So for my iPad, I have an app called Mapulator where basically it just uses Google. You go on there and you can click in little data points and measure the area that way. It's a little less you know, exact than you actually make the property, but if the property's far away, it's a perfect alternative to this tool here. As for shovels, these are just some cheap shovels we've got, but there's one tool I absolutely will live and die by, and I don't have it on me because we lost it, unfortunately, but it's absolutely, absolutely amazing on piece. There's no pieces to it. It's like they stamp the entire thing with one piece of steel. I'll tell you a quick story before we end this video. Uh, last season, we had our 16-foot trailer before the crash. We were driving down a bumpy road in Norman, and it bounced off the off the ball of my truck hit the ground hit my truck and then hit the ground again so we stop we i go out back and look and the trailer nose is on the ground i think i might have a picture of it i'll, I'll throw it up if i do the trailer nose is on the ground so what we did we didn't have a jack or anything we took that steel shovel and we just threw it under the nose of the trailer and mind you this is with half a ton of rocks on the front of the trailer and we just bend up and we're able to get some rocks under there until we can get the jack and actually start raising the trailer to get back and the shovel didn't bend at all it worked great there was a little bit of paint discoloring but other than that it was actually able to lift the weight and handle it so in terms of digging or prying out tree roots other shovels you can't put all your weight on them you're going to break them this one i promise you it's impossible you're not going to be able to break or bend this thing because we couldn't arguably on purpose and i i don't know i mean I can't think of a better example of, of how to bend a shovel than that, and it worked great. So un under regular landscaping activities, that those are the kind of tools I recommend. Solid, solid steel piece. You pay extra 80, 90 bucks, I don't care. It's gonna be worth it. You're not gonna break it, um, and it might get you out of a pinch if you need it.